Hello everyone, this is Daniel and welcome back to another quick video in which I want to talk to you about topology in 3D models. Topology is really one of those very essential uh, skills that we need as 3D artists and in this video I want to explain why it is so important, uh, how to approach topology and give you basically some of the good practices and give you some resources to use in your learning anyways. Uh, so eventually we'll be talking about this phase here. I just give you a quick preview here, but before we get into that, let me quickly give you an explanation on, on topology. Basically, when you think about 3D models, we can, for example, make a cube just by placing down eight points and connecting them with faces. That would be, you know, probably the most efficient way. But if I subdivide this, you know, it's still the exactly the same shape, isn't it? Uh, with absolutely no change in the surface. However, the way the points are distributed are different. You might say, okay, this is not too different, it's just subdivided, but what if I um, recreate faces in such a way that it looks completely different now? So look at this one, for example. Uh, it's still exactly the same shape, but the inner life, if you want to put it that way, is completely different. And now, when we talk about topology, we are speaking about how we distribute the points uh, like across the 3D model and our goal with doing good topology should be to describe the desired 3D shape with uh, as efficient as possible. Oftentimes, you can describe the same shape with an equal amount of points, but what makes now a better topology and what makes a worse topology? Now, consider this case. If I was going to, uh, you know, if this was a character and I want to bend the, this, um, this cube, uh, for example, if it was an arm, like this, uh, you can see we can easily do it because um, our structure, our topology, supports this kind of deformation. It doesn't cause any artifacts. Let's undo that quickly and let's try to bend it now in the other direction where I kind of did a new topology here. I'll select again the points and I will do the same thing I did before but you'll see that weird things start to happen and this is triangles actually like the software eventually has to convert this plane to triangles uh, you can see it like the shading is even but if I convert it into triangles this is what happens and because well various software does it differently so in some cases um, let's see, this might happen. And so your results may vary with this kind of solution. You might get bumps and and that sort of thing. And these kind of edges are the main issue. Uh, so when we work with any model, really, we try to make the topology flow along our edges because when it deforms, it will then uh, support that kind of deformation. Now let's get back to our face because I think it's a bit more easy to show here in this good example of how topology should be done. Let me, for example, give you an uh, give you an expression here. I'll make this face smile a little bit. So I'm just going to quickly use the proportional editing tools with a sharp fall off. Oh, that's a mirrored model. Let's just apply that quickly. And if I drag the corner, you can see that even without doing anything special, the wrinkles that we are supposed to have that should flow along this line, uh, that's because of the anatomy. Uh, everything falls into place nicely. There is absolutely no problem here, and so far so good, I would say. I can simulate now bad topology uh, quickly. I made a copy here. I'm going to subdivide this model a few times and then decimate it, because that should give us some very messy, messy structure which is what I want to demonstrate to you, what happens if we don't follow the rules. Now I'll try to do the same thing again, and you can already see what happens. It's just a huge mess, this will not look smooth, uh, the shading will be completely off here, and, and I think we even have more points, this is like 2,000, almost no, 3,000 point, 3,000 vertices compared to here where we only have 1,700. So um, at this point, it should be quite obvious that topology can make a huge difference. But now 
let's talk about how we are supposed to place these. And I will be talking particularly about faces because, um, you know, I can't show you everything. And I think faces are a good example to start thinking about how we should lay out topology. Uh, faces are a very good example because we know very well how they deform as we see them on a daily basis. For example, the eyes, when they close uh, or open, like just imagine in your head for now, how would you see the wrinkles? And we all know that above the upper eyelid, for example, we have a wrinkle that goes in this direction. We have on the lower eyelid wrinkles that go in this direction. And in the corner, there are various approaches actually. Like some people make the flow, I'll draw it with a line, continue outwards like this crossing, because that's what we see sometimes. Uh, in this stylized character, we have very round eyes. So I decided to go with a full circle. Um, but you see again that my topology follows those um, wrinkles. We also have the whole, the face as a whole, which might deform sometimes, you know, it when you open the mouth, the chin goes down and it stretches the whole face. So another important kind of loop, as we call them, is uh, around the entire face. That helps us to keep it very even and, you know, the side will stretch very properly and evenly. Uh, when we open the chin. Another area with lots of deformations is the mouth, of course, where the corners can move into all kinds of directions. And the wrinkles that we're going to see when we stretch the mouth are uh, kind of coming from the nose and then bending downwards towards the chin once they go around the corner of the mouth. And this is once again what we support here with a loop that goes over the mouth and with another loop that goes around the mouth. And I hope at this point the whole idea behind topology uh, becomes more understandable to you. Um, I think with me mechanical parts it's a lot easier because um, you have clean edges and you know that, for example here, you know that you want the edges to just follow wherever there's a hard edge in the model, um, so that's not a big issue. But where it is difficult and, you know, people will do different approaches is with organic models like this one. Uh, so here's my approach to it. Now here's a few more uh, tips that, and advice that I want to give you before ending this video. Um, because so far, maybe you have known already most of the things that I've been saying. But when you look at the individual points, um, you see that each vertex has edges connected to them. And we should try to keep it to either four edges connected or five edges connected, but not more. Uh, we have cases where there's three edges connected to that to one point. That's fine too. But um, if we're not careful, it might happen that that we, you know, if you connect two points like these, it would actually end up giving you eight edges connected to one point, and that's kind of where things start to be messy. So. Avoid um, vertices with uh, more edges connected than five. So three to five is fine. Uh, also speaking about um, polygons now, you see that this entire model is made out of quads. And that's also, again, a very good thing to do because we can easily subdivide quads and even unsubdivide them in cases to recover our lower levels of geometry. And if we happen to, you know, have too many loops, as I think here, for example, I should have actually reduced the number of loops, we can easily go in and delete an edge loop. Um, and there are many other cases where, where having only quads becomes useful. Uh, in the end, when we go into game engines, actually, we end up converting them into triangles oftentimes. However, that's a last step usually that the software might actually almost do automatically in some cases. So. Uh, as for our modeling process, we want to keep it to quads only. And let's see, did I forget anything else? Um, that sums pretty much everything up that I wanted to say. Um, maybe one last thing that I can point out is that uh, you see how I have this transition between this loop here to this loop here. And another kind of transition that happens at this corner. And lining these corners up to, you know, cleanly have 
these sections separated is also something nice to do. I mean, imagine if this was actually, um, I can try modifying it a little bit quickly to show you what I mean. This is now very not clean, but imagine, just imagine this loop was going to end here and it would, it would not line up and, you know, we would have a loop that ends midway here and the loop that comes from above on the other hand um, would go like this, I'm just connecting it quickly. You know, this loop would only go to here and it would end, so that's not very clean again. So I try to avoid these kind of stopping loops by lining these up so that we have, let's see, a continuous loop here, a short segment here, and then again, continuous ones up here. So these are kind of little things that you can do. Um, if you are not sure about the approach, uh, there are many people sharing online their solutions to topology. And you can just, you know, look at the pictures, the wireframe models and try to imitate them. Uh, look at the direction, the polygons flow. And I think this, generally speaking, will help you a lot to improve the quality of your 3D models. Mm, and at least from my opinion, it's a very essential skill to have, even though it might not give you uh, a huge visual, um, what is it, improvement right away. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I thought once in a while it would be good to do another uh, kind of tutorial explanatory video uh, as there is a lot to teach after all. So I'll try to make more of them in the future. Until then, see you. Uh, thanks for watching.